Let's go back. You told me you wrote a thesis on, on the NFL. Why'd you do that? It was just basically a way to combine two of the things I love, which is America and, and sport. And, you know, uh, I have a holiday. You no, know, my parents rather have a holiday home out in Florida. So we always used to go there every year. So we always had a sort of had, a, had an arm's reach. So it's always been something I'd sort of been fascinated by and just growing up, growing up watching, I thought what a great way to sort of, you know, combine two things, you know, rather than starting off on a, you know, an area of knowledge that you don't know anything about, at least something you've got a working experience with. So 15 years now, so you've studied this, the NFL in the UK. Where, how far has it come? Where was it at the start? And how far do you think it will go? Well, I think if, you know, if you go back to 2007, when everything was all sort of first announced that they were coming here, over here, as I said to you earlier, I think it was only really the weirdos that would stay up and watch the late <laughs> night game. I mean, the NFL community has always been here. You go back to the 80s when it was on Channel 4 and Channel 5. Um, but it's, it's, it was a very slow growth over the years. But then the London games came and it just exploded. I don't want to say overnight, it took a couple of years to really grow, but it's grown to a level that I really don't think anyone would have, you know, would have envisioned at that time. You know, from, you know, from one game a year, you went to two games, to three games, to four games a couple of years yeah. ago. We've got the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium where we're playing the Sunday. You know, there was purpose built for an NFL team, you know, and you know, there's even been talk of a franchise again. Whether or not that was the vision in 2007, you know, only those in the within the powers will know. But the fact that we're getting we're getting to that stage just shows how much it has, you know, it has grown. As I say, it was only a, it was a small audience. But I was checking, I was checking earlier. Uh, I think it was four million people watched uh, the Super Bowl, uh, the the Bucks Chiefs Super Bowl yeah. a couple of years ago. So just goes to show that it is, it's not exactly a major sport in the UK, but it, the in terms of the landscape that's gone to. It's levels that you know I certainly don't think anyone would have would have expected in the early days. So, how much education still needs to happen though for the sport itself? So, in other words, the folks that will show up on Sunday that aren't making the trip here, how much do they know about football? How do they do they know how to respond? Do they know what's happening? I think now that it's stopped becoming a one-off event. So in the early days, it would have just been NFL fans who wanted to, who wanted to go. So they knew what a first down was, what a holding was, what a face marks was. They knew. But now the the games have sort of been diluted, you know. So we're getting you know three games a year. It's become more of a casual thing. So you will have people who have never been to an NFL game before, who, who again have sort of had an arm's length, who don't know what a you know what an illegal shift is and stuff like that. There will be some people who do not know. So I think maybe the NFL just needs to do a better job of on game day. I think that, again, they used to do it, but I think that's all gone away. Whenever a penalty is called, for instance, just say illegal shift, and they just explain exactly what yeah. it is. There are still, because there will be some people who, uh, who it is their first game and who are still relatively new to it. Again, those who have followed this sport for years will know exactly, like, if, the, if there's a flag in the, in the offensive backfield, there's a 95% chance it's going to be holding. So, but there will be some people who still don't even know what holding is or what constitutes holding. Holding, wait, they're supposed to be tackling people. I don't understand the problem. I exactly. Get it. Yeah. So uh, you've studied this, you've covered it. How significant is it that f took 15 years and now the Packers are finally making their first appearance? I think I've been writing it all this week. It is history. It, it's history in the making. It's been 15 years in the making. The fact that it took them so long. I know there's obviously reasons. You know, uh, Aaron Rodgers said it himself a couple of years ago that they, Green Bay were never going to give up a home game because they're sold out for years to come. And the Packers fans travel so much that they don't want to give it. I think that was one of the things with the Jaguars. Right. They were playing them a couple of years ago. It was always a thing of, right, we know we're going to sell out with the Packers. Would that be the game to bring them over? They said, no, we know we're going to sell out TIA, whatever it is called right. now these days. They knew that you know, getting someone to give up a Packers, you know, when the Packers were coming, was always going to be a big step. But with this 17th game giving teams you know, the ability to play neutral games right. and plays away from home, it would it was just a matter of time. But I think it is significant now that we've got all 32 teams, all because there, there are fans of all 32 teams in the UK. So the fact that everyone now will have had a chance, you know, whether or not they got tickets, but would have had a chance to see their favorite team, I think is pretty significant now. Basically, the cycle, the cycle starts again. All right, and now let's get into some of the stuff that we might hear from uh, English fans at the game. So let's say uh, Packers wind up burning some early timeouts. What, uh, what kind of comment might that elicit uh, in in your lexicon uh, are we past the watershed at this point uh, how much are we what's the what's the language or are we going to be bleeping this stuff we're going to be bleeping this stuff out um so let's so again if they burn two timeouts they say that was 
that play calling was absolute bollocks or he he really cocked up those with those timeouts so there is a couple of lexicons whether or not they they translate over is if you know i got a fiance who lives in america and she is still learning you know every day there's bits of lexicon and different words that she's she's picking up um so yeah it, it's going to be it's going to be weird again how much of the crowd is going to get picked up i don't know but i'm pretty sure there are going to be some words